Hey guys, Drifter here. Today I've got a little bit of Halo 4 for you. Yes, Halo on this Call of Duty channel that's not a machinima, actual Halo gameplay. Why I haven't seen that in ages. Yes, I uh, got into the Mantis here and I managed to have a flawless victory on this map and flawless as in I killed a lot of people throughout this entire nine minute video and commentary and did not die. It was difficult, but I managed to do it. It was kind of uh, sad really because I went to the Halo 4 launch party in Seattle and I met all the 343 Studios people, the uh, life-size Master Chief and Warthog and all that. But because I was traveling, I didn't actually get my copy of Halo until yesterday afternoon, at which point I proceeded to sit down and beat the entire uh, nine-hour campaign on Heroic and then restart over later that night on Legendary. Watch, I'm going to move my mech up here to kind of guard that laser. I don't want people to get that, but I got sniped. Very uh, interesting kind of vehicle this is. At Halo, my specialty was always land vehicles. I was always best at the Warthog, I was very good at the Ghost, and Halo Reach, they had this, not the Wraith, the, was it the Phantom? It was, it was basically the Ghost that was bigger and had a cannon on it, I was really good at that. I was really good at the Scorpion, Banshee, you know, kind of mixed bag, but land vehicles, Warthog, Mongoose, awesome. So this really was up my up my alley right here. This is what they call a mantis in Halo. It's kind of like if Halo had mechs, or if Halo and Mech War had a baby, or maybe Halo uh, mixed with Gundam or something. But you know, I thought this would be a stupid thing. I thought people would kill it very easily. But if you use this weapon properly, the way it's designed to be used, it's actually an extremely effective weapon. This guy over here almost got me with the turret. And it's not overpowered. It's fairly easy to take down if people get up behind you or if you hit it with a laser or something. But the proper way to use this weapon, what I discovered from, uh, this was my first time ever using it online. I played, it with, played with it a few other times with somewhat less of a success. But you use the same strategies. What you do with this weapon is you use it defensively. Offensively. This is not an offensive weapon. This is a very slow moving vehicle and it's very easy to take down if people get close to you but it has very high firepower. So what you can do is do what I do and either stay in the middle of the map or a little bit closer to your side of the base and suppress the hell out of people with this machine gun. I have to get a little bit closer to them than I'd really like to get to actually get the machine gun kills. This kind of scares me because you know, that guy with just a regular assault rifle almost cut my giant mech down right there. But you can really do a lot of damage. At long range, it can't hit you. And the missiles are excellent for polishing off vehicles or maybe dropping somebody out here. Ultimately, you're going to get a lot of assist with this weapon. But it's a vehicle slaughtering machine. And you can kind of use it like I did to control the entire map. What you'll see in this gameplay is that I sit up in the middle and more or less keep all the bad guys suppressed and put down and under control. And nobody really moves over to my side. However, uh, when my mech begins to get weaker and more damaged and I pull back, you'll start to see more of the bad guys leak, like we're playing tower defense here. They'll start slipping on over the hill and my teammates can't quite keep up with it. You definitely do need teammates to help you with this because you can get killed. The new vehicle damage system, I really, really like. In older Halo games, in Halo 1, your vehicle pretty much, you couldn't destroy it. It would just be tied to your shields, whatever that was. And in Halo 2, your vehicle would take damage proportional to your uh, to your shield. Uh, sorry, your shields would take damage proportional to your vehicle health up to a point. The vehicle would still shield you. Then uh, I think that was the same in Halo 3. Halo Reach was really annoying because your vehicle had separate health, and that's a good idea on paper. But people would just snipe warthogs twice or banshees one or two times, and the vehicles got kind of useless because the sniper rifle would just trash every last one of them, except maybe the wraith. It didn't hurt the wraith all that bad. But in this game, I feel like they found an excellent balance on how to handle vehicles becoming overpowered. Because in older Halo games, your shields would just regenerate and you couldn't really hurt the vehicles. And then in Halo Reach, you had vehicles that were just about worthless. What they decided to do was uh, the amount of, how would I say it, extra shield that you have by being in a vehicle is proportional to your vehicle's health. Uh, you don't get like an overshield or anything, but obviously if you're sitting in a tank and somebody shoots at you with a machine gun, it's not going to do very much damage. But the more damage your vehicle becomes, the lesser that benefit is. I noticed this with Warthogs, with the Mantis, with the Ghost. So if I have a fresh, let's say, Warthog, and somebody shoots at me with a machine gun, they're only hitting the Warthog, it's going to be doing like one-fifth to one-quarter damage to my shields or less. But if I use this hog for a while and I get all the way down to the things on fire, the hubcaps have fallen off, it looks like hell. 
It's not protecting me at all. I get no armor bonus from sitting in the Warthog. So if somebody starts shooting at it with a pistol, it does the same damage that it would do to my normal shields if they were hitting me with a pistol. Less the headshots, of course. Here we go. We got some Mantis on Mantis action. There's his back. He's coming to get me. And I took him out. Did you see that? Nailed him with a rocket. Actually, that might have been a... Yeah, no, I got him. I don't even know. It's kind of hard tra to keep track of what I actually killed and what I got assist for in this game. Because you get medals for just about everything. It's like, ooh, you got a kill with a vehicle. That's a medal. You got a regular kill. That's a medal. You got an assist. That's metal. Like, well, damn, what what do I not get metals for? But the Halo 4 multiplayer overall is interesting. It takes the better elements from Halo 3 and a handful from Halo Reach. The bloom from Halo Reach comes back, but it's not as extreme, so I can actually hit things with my guns and I might actually play this game. Now, I didn't play Reach because the reticle bloom was too strong, but they started mixing in elements of Call of Duty. In Halo 3, you now have, I wouldn't say unlimited sprint. Sprint is no longer an armor ability. You just kind of get it and you can run a couple hundred yards, pretty long way. And then you have an armor ability on top of that. So you have sprint plus something else. And the armor abilities are weaker than they were in Halo Reach. In Halo Reach, it was like the armor ability battle. Was he going to do the shield block or was he going to jetpack or... Uh, roll into you or something like that. In this game, the jetpack doesn't boost you as high, the, the cloaking doesn't work as well, and you have to be more tactical with your armor abilities instead of kind of depending on them to be a douchebag, uh, a la Halo Reach. They also added in uh, what I would call mini kill streaks or ordinances. It just kind of builds up after you've killed so many people, you can summon an overshield or a shotgun or something. It falls in one of those little drop piles. You can actually kill somebody if, the, if your ordnance drops on top of them and crushes them. I talked to one of the MLG players, and they got killed in match because they earned enough kills to call in rockets. And when they called in rockets, uh, he called in on the ground, then he got engaged in a firefight, and the ordnance he called in himself came in and he got crushed. So it would be like getting crushed by your own care package in Call of Duty. You have classes that you have to unlock, weapons that you have to unlock to start start off with default in the classes and you have I think you have gun camos in this game I'm not entirely sure I haven't unlocked any yet so you're kind of uh, mixing and matching a lot of games I've played a couple of maps overall it was pretty fun I think the vehicle balance was excellent the competitive play is a little bit better but I feel like this game kind of lacks that old halo aesthetics the maps are very very clean they're not distracting and there's nothing the colors are not as bright as they used to be uh, it kind of, the maps are less busy, so they're easier to play. People can't hide in corners and behind weird trees and rocks. But on the flip side, I don't think they have that same old Halo quirkiness that they had. Uh, I don't know, maybe they play better, but I just kind of miss all those goofy old maps from Halo that all look crazy and weird, like I was on Alien Planets and stuff. The single player I played, it was excellent, as always. Uh, 343 Studios truly made a Halo game. They made new enemies and you didn't really see that in previous halos because you had brutes that were interesting but then when the elites became the good guys oh the brutes have shields and they're basically like bigger elites that are a little bit angrier and halo reach you didn't have a whole lot of new enemies except for maybe oh did they have engineers in halo reach or is that halo odst but this one you have these prometheans these sort of cybernetic super bastards and they teleport and they uh they kind of poop out these little ships that fly around and if you don't kill the ships that fly around the ships will heal them or revive them, and they can teleport over to their ship and do a lot of really annoying things. And it sounds like it would be cheap, but it makes an interesting gameplay dynamic when your enemies can teleport around you and attack. Overall, it was really fun. I probably won't post a whole lot of Halo content on this channel. I like to play Halo by myself. It's mostly a COD channel. I play COD in public, but Halo is kind of like my private game where I can go and play and be a nobody and have nobody recognize me and have no expectations or anything. And it's it's maintained. It's fun. It's a 10-year-old game or 10-year-old series, and it's still fun for me. And the question is, is Halo 4 better than Black Ops 2? If I have the money, which one should I buy? And uh, if you're going for a single player experience and you like horde mode and firefight and that kind of stuff, Halo is probably better. But if you're going for raw multiplayer, uh, I'm going to say go with Black Ops 2. Uh, people still like Call of Duty. Call of Duty still popular and happening. But Halo may or may not have seen its day. It's no longer the number one online shooter. It's still fun, but some people don't like it. It's not the game that everybody's going to be playing. It's uh, If you're a Halo fan, if you like Halo, if you enjoy Halo, you'll definitely enjoy this one. But if not, and you can only get one, I would tell you to get Black Ops 2. Well, that's all for this commentary. I think I went 18 and 0 and had buttloads of assist. I hope you enjoyed it. Drifter out.